Good morning everyone to our Wednesday Holy Communion service this morning. Um, we're going to be doing the first order of Holy Communion on page 101. So welcome. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And over the page, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as, as yourself. yourself. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son, to suffer death upon a cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of the enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And so we'll come, go to our <coughs> psalm now. Our psalm is Psalm 88, verses 8 to 15. Psalm 88. Verses 8 to 15. And which page? Page 314. <clears throat> and we say this yeah. in alternate yeah. verses. You have put my friends far from me and made me to be abhorred by them. I am so fast in prison I cannot get free. My eyes fail because of my affliction. Lord, I call to you every day. I stretch out my hands toward you. Will you work wonders for the dead, or will the shades rise up again to praise you? Shall your love be declared in the grave, or your faithfulness in the place of destruction? Will your wonders be made known in the dark, or your righteousness in the land where all things are forgotten? But to you, Lord, will I cry. Early in the morning my prayer shall come before you. O oh Lord, why have you rejected me? Why do you hide your face from me? And our gospel. And our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 9, verses 51 to 50... 61. 61. 2. 62. Two. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Just a, um, just a few reflections on this passage here from Luke's Gospel. In the ancient world, and right, really right through most of history, uh, people didn't really travel much. People tended to stay in their villages or wherever it was locally. 
Um, there was no, usually no need to travel much. And in any case, it was dangerous to do that, uh, usually. There were brigands on roads and things like that. Except uh, in Jerusalem, of course, in, the, in ancient Palestine or, or the Promised Land, Jews would make the trip to Jerusalem uh, as pilgrims. Uh, this was normal every year. And what's more, they would tell the story of the Exodus, which is prominent, it was prominent in their minds at the time. The journey made from Egypt to the Promised Land. Luke, uh, Luke, this is this is important in Luke's gospel. He uses that phrase on the way. Or he also does this in Acts, uh, where there are a number of journeys made. Paul, in particular, makes three missionary journeys. And uh, and and now we see in this case here, uh, now Jesus is setting out for Jerusalem. He's got his. Uh, what the word we read here, or the terminology used by Luke, is Jesus sets his face towards Jerusalem to fulfil his exodus. Mm. Jerusalem is the goal where Jesus will make that exodus. This is his exodus journey. Notice also that he sends messengers ahead of himself here. Uh, which is something also that resonates with the Old Testament, where God says he will <coughs> send his messengers before you in Exodus 23.20 to guide the people into the new land, this new land. So all these things are resonating here. And it is the road that Jesus takes by which God is returning to his people. It was normal after exile, uh, that kind of thing, for God to bring his people back and he would return to them in his temple. But as they're travelling along, James and John think only now of the position of Elijah. When they, called, uh, when they meet opposition, they ask Jesus whether they should call fire down on this town, this Samaritan town, just as Elijah called uh, uh, fire down on God's enemies. But that now is not the kind of journey that this is for Jerusalem, for Jesus. This is a journey in which he brings a message of God's love and his grace as well. Many see Jesus um, many see Jesus and think of seeing Jesus along the way, think it would be good to follow him. They think that this he would be good to follow him. But it seems that many wanted conditions attached to their following him. And that's the second part of our passage today. For example, there was an obligation uh, at that time. Bearing of one's father was considered to be a holy and binding thing. But Jesus says even that should take second now to following him. There are those also who want to go back and farewell their families which is an important thing at the time but Jesus says now that only the road ahead is where we look now the path that ahead of, is ahead of us that's what's paramount the path of discipleship and so I just think with this passage here we're, we're left with these questions and we we're sort of Beg these questions of being. Where is Jesus asking us to travel? Not yesterday, not go back and visit yesterday, but today and especially tomorrow. And the second question is, and the question we're left with is, are we ready to travel that path? They're the questions that come out of this passage. Let's pray. Lord, we uh, thank you for this passage. Lord, and we recognize the challenge that's here, the, the road of discipleship. And Lord, but we know that it is a road of grace and of your love. And so, Lord, we can have confidence in you that wherever we go, as we travel where you call us to go, 
that you go with us and before us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we continue on that narrow road uh, and we say together the words of the Nicene Creed, point 11 on page 103. We, we believe, believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with his Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has, has spoken, spoken through the prophets. We, we believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And over the page. Let us pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. And on Wednesdays we often uh, ask for any prayer points, don't we? Yeah, so if you have any prayer so points, please unmute yourselves. Yeah, if you if yeah. You would like to do that. So we'll unmute Mary so that... Any prayers? How do we unmute Mary? Well, Mary has to do that herself. We can do that. Well, so any, any prayer requests? Yes, so uh, Sylvia. Yeah, um, I want to give my thanks to Pastor for Mary for continuing to get better. Yeah. And I want to thank you for the fact that Marissa's mum is actually in remission. Oh, how wonderful. So we're praying for Samantha, uh, who's not well and is at home, and we're, praying, we're giving thanks for Marissa's mum being in remission from her cancer. Which oh, is wow. Brilliant. Fantastic. That's fantastic. Mary, did you have a request? And uh, for my brother, Pat John, who's having chemo on Thursday. Yes. Pat John. Pat John. Okay. Right. Write down Marissa. Marissa's mum. And What's Marissa's mum's name, Sylvia? Yeah? I don't know. Oh, okay. 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 All right. All right. That's all right. So, there we go. Yeah, and, so, and Samantha. Samantha, yep. Okay. Do you have any request? Yeah. It's Faye. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. For who, Carol? For Faye's daughter, Carol. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, stressed okay. in the lockdown. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, let us pray. Let us pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy apostle to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We ask you in your mercy to accept our prayers, which we offer to your divine majesty. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the ways of righteousness and peace and guide their rulers in wisdom and justice for the tranquility and good of all. Bless especially your servant Elizabeth our Queen her representatives and ministers, her parliaments, and all who exercise authority in this land. We pray for 
uh, Scott Morrison, our Prime Minister, for all the Premiers in the different states and for our own Premier, Daniel Andrews. And Lord, we pray that um, they'll function well together and make good and just decisions with wisdom that you give them, especially in the days ahead as we open up our country. Grant that they may impartially administer justice, restrain wickedness and vice and uphold integrity and truth. And Lord, today we also think of America with the debate coming up between the two candidates for presidency. Lord, we pray for that land so troubled at the moment and in, in such a, a tough space. And Lord, the impact that that country has uh, around the world. And we pray for a just leader for that country. And Lord, we pray for all the other nations, especially, Lord, for peoples under dictatorships. Be with them. Be their freedom, Lord. If they have no freedom within their structures, we pray that you will be the freedom in their hearts. We beseech you to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially our Archbishop Philip and our Bishop Paul, that by their life and doctrine they may set forth your true life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments and to all your people give your heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that they may receive your word with meek hearts and due reverence and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We ask you of your goodness, Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. Lord, we think of all those who um, in this current situation in the COVID lockdown in our state, especially in metropolitan Melbourne, are suffering inordinate amounts of stress. And Lord, as we hover in our biorhythms with one day maybe not as good as another, Lord, help us to hold on to you as our anchor, your changelessness, Lord. Help us to plug into that to trust that you know what the end of all this is and you hold our lives in your hand. Help us to find our security in you, Lord. And Lord, may these dear ones find relief. May they find community in one way or another. And may they find relief through the love of those who love them. May they sense that. And Lord, may your love be poured into the hearts and through others to these people. And Lord, we pray for Carol, for Faye's daughter, struggling at the moment with stress. And Lord, we pray for all those that we love whose stress levels go up and down. Help us, Lord, to keep an even keel. And Lord, when we swing, be there, be there in our highs, be there in our lows, Lord. May we always know the depth of your love for us. Lord, we uh, pray for Samantha struggling with illness and off work at the moment. We thank you, Lord, for her, for her life and for her uh, love of work, that she enjoys her role. And we pray that she will soon return to that place of productivity. And Lord, we ask um, that you heal her quickly. And Lord, I pray also for Sylvia, um, helping Samantha to get through her days, serving her, that, um, that you'll be with her as her role has changed for this short time. 
and we also pray for Stuart um, who's taken the precautionary measure of staying home. So we thank you for their commitment to the safety of others, Lord, and we ask you to keep them safe. We give you great thanks, Lord, that Marissa's mum is now in remission. What a wonderful, wonderful gift. And we pray, Lord, that this will hold steady, that she'll see Christmas and beyond, and that she'll have time to cherish the love of her daughter and those around her, and that she'll come into that wonderful saving grace that you offer us all. And Lord, for um, Mary's brother, Pat John, who's going and facing this chemotherapy this Thursday and walking that road of chemo, Lord, may you be the Lord of all that therapy. May you still his heart and work in his body. May he know that he's a child of yours and that you have his best interest in, at heart. And we pray, Lord, for this therapy that they'll target um, the cancer and that his, the rest of his body won't be so affected by it. Lord, that you'll minimise the fallout and that you'll help his cells to heal. We continue to pray for Benjamin in the Northern Territory, uh, Lord, with um, you know difficulties with transport and just being really remote. And Lord, all the things that he faces in his day, all the events and commitments that he has, may he. Uh, meet every challenge as it comes ahead of him and Lord may he learn to walk in your ways and trust in your will for him and we continue to pray for our daughter Rachel as well that she'll do the same that she'll find her place in you So, Lord, we bring all these prayers to you, praying for each other um, and all the other people that are in our hearts that we haven't verbalised our prayers for. Lord, you know every word that's on our tongue before we say it. You know the unspoken prayers of this morning's meeting and we pray that you will grant with great wisdom answers to all of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Grant this, Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only media and advocate. Amen. amen. And the top of page 108. Brothers and sisters, we who would come to the Holy Communion of the body and blood of our Saviour Christ must consider how St Paul exhorts us to examine ourselves before presuming to eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For the benefit is great if with a penitent heart and lively faith we receive that holy sacrament. We then spiritually eat the flesh of Christ and drink his blood we dwell in Christ and he in us. We are one with Christ and Christ with us. Yet also the danger is great. If we receive the bread and cup unworthily, judge yourselves therefore that you be not judged of the Lord. Repent truly for your sins, having a steadfast faith in Christ our Saviour. Amend your lives and love your neighbour. Above all, give hearty thanks to God for the redemption of the world by the death and passion of your Saviour Christ, truly God and truly human, who humbled himself to death on the cross for us sinners, that he might make us children of God and raise us to eternal life. 
You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take his holy sacrament to strengthen and comfort you. But first, let us make a humble confession of our sins to Almighty God. We say together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge with shame the sins we have committed by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for all our misdoings. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him. Have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear these words of assurance for those who truly turn to Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And now we come to the thanksgiving and communion. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, mighty creator and eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord, Lord Most High. High. And over the page, point 24, we say together, We do, do not, not presume to come to your table, table merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that we who receive these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who on the night took bread? Who on the night he was betrayed took bread? 
And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my body of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Come, let us take this body and blood of Jesus, remembering that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for me, preserved my body and soul to everlasting life. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for me, preserved my body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. David, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. On page 114, let us pray. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And on the top of page 115. Almighty and ever-living God, we heartily thank you that you graciously feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And thus assure us of your favour and goodness towards us and that we are true members of your mystical body of your Son. The blessed company of all the faithful people and are also heirs through hope of your eternal kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of, a, of your dear Son. And we humbly beseech you, Heavenly Father, so to assist us with your grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as you have prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory world without end. Amen. Amen. And we say the glory together. Glory, glory to God, God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you and give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. So that